In the previous video, we looked at why you might want to use multiple style sheets instead of one giant style sheet. And in this video, we're going to look at various themes and how they structure their style sheets and look at some examples of actual CSS code to get a feel for what fits in what kind of style sheet. Okay, let's go ahead and start by looking at a couple of core themes. Go ahead and open up your themes directory and let's look at Bartik first. All of the style sheets in Bartik are in the CSS folder, so go ahead and expand that. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the first style sheet, colors.css. As you might expect, this contains definitions for colors used throughout the theme. By putting them all in one file, it gives the themer the ability to change the colors without inadvertently changing something else. Having all of the colors in one place also allows the themer to get a feel for the palette that's being used and to easily alter that palette. Let's take a look at some of the properties that are being used inside of these selectors. So we have color here, border color, background, background color, which is simply one of the subset properties of background here. We have more border, more background. We have some background image here, but this is being used to create gradients using a special property, WebKit Gradient and Moz Linear Gradient. Then as we scroll down, we see more color, background color, border color, and so on. Okay, let's open up another style sheet. This next one is IERTL, which is shorthand for Internet Explorer right to left. So these are quirks that are come up when working with Internet Explorer, but it's also for languages that read right to left, like Arabic or Hebrew. Now we have a couple of IE files here. We have IE and IE6, and we also have a couple of right to left files. We have layout right to left, and we have style right to left. So this is kind of the combination of two particular quirks, a specific type of language and a specific browser. And so the kinds of styles that you'll find in there vary widely depending on the kind of quirks that are occurring for those two scenarios. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the various properties that you'll find in here. So you see here we have some positioning, which is left. This is an absolutely positioned item, so it gives it a sense for how far left it should be. Zoom, which is probably a browser fix type thing. Floating, of course we're going to float to a different side depending on right to left. Position, right, float, display, vertical, align. All of these are very position oriented properties. We don't see anything like colors or font sizes or things like that. As we scroll down, we see there's just more structure here. Background positioning, padding, we see margin, display, the display property used in different ways. And you see that this isn't a very long file either. There's really not much here because hopefully if we do our theme right, there shouldn't be too many quirks that are going to pop up in Internet Explorer. Okay, let's jump back to the list of style sheets here. Let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer, ie.css, and see what's inside. This file is likely included on any version of Internet Explorer because it's not specific to a particular version. We see this is ie.css instead of ie6, for example. And also, this is probably included in Internet Explorer, and then for right-to-left languages, that ie-rtl.css file is included on top of this. And we'll see similar properties being used here. Margin top, left padding, height, all positioning style properties. Let's go ahead and scroll down, see if we see anything that's very different. We have width, float. We do have some colors here. And there's probably some reason why these are being applied here. It could be that inheritance doesn't work quite the same way with Internet Explorer. And so we have to be specific about what kind of colors are being used in various elements. And then we have margin top. So a lot of what we saw in the previous Internet Explorer CSS file. Let's go ahead and jump back to the files. Let's open up IE6. Now this is specific to Internet Explorer 6. So there's even fewer items in this one. And we see that 
they have to do with positioning as well. Overflow, width, zoom, width and border bottom. Now, this is probably an inheritance thing as well. Let's go ahead and jump back to the style sheets. Okay, now we have our layout. Layout has to do with the positioning of our theme in general. Now we have layout and layout right to left. Let's go ahead and open up layout first. You see here this is a little bit of a longer file. It has information like the height of various elements. These are some of the large sort of wrapper elements, HTML, body, and page, giving it a height of 100. We have page wrapper, which also is one of those elements that wrap around almost everything on the page. We have various width properties, so the layout is typically where you would go, the layout.css file is where you would go to change the width of fixed width layouts and to change the padding on either side for sidebars, for example. Let's go ahead and scroll down and look at a few more of these. We have width, margins, positioning, float, margin, margin, margin. We have more positioning, and as we, as we go through, we pretty much see this used throughout. These pixel items are probably the most interesting, and they have to do with the width of our layout in various situations. So we see one sidebar content. When there's only one sidebar, this is what the main content width will be, whereas with two sidebars, we have a smaller width because that second sidebar is going to be added to the side. And so when we go to change the layout, we'll probably need to take a look at all of these pixel definitions here and make sure that they all add up to one another. Okay, let's go ahead and jump to the layout right to left and take a look at that. We see here that the styles are very simple. We just change the float to right for various column situations. And for region header, we float it left instead of probably right like it was before. And then the secondary menu, we position slightly differently. Okay, let's jump back to the style sheet directory. We have maintenance page, which is included when the site is in maintenance mode. We have print. Let's go ahead and open this up to take a look at some of the styles that'll be different for this. So you see there's some high contrast colors coming into play. The color is being turned to black for body input text area select, so any inputs. The background is being changed to none so that it's a clean background. We have the width that's being fixed at a particular size that'll work for printing. We have several important items being hidden, including the sidebars and the navigation, the toolbar, the footer, and as we scroll down, we see that there's not a whole lot else. There's a width definition here, and a couple other things are hidden as well. Okay, let's jump back to the style sheet directory. Now style, and style right to left, will contain these general styles that don't fit into a specific style sheet. Let's go ahead and open up style.css and look at some of the items inside here. So we see here we have a couple of font or typography style properties, line height, font size. We have word wrap, and then some resetting of the margin, padding, border, and outline of the body. We have more sort of typography settings here, text decoration. As we scroll down, we have some margins happening around certain headings. And we could continue to work through this file for quite a while, if we scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see just how long this is. It's got 1,658 lines, and it covers a lot of ground. In general, the way that style.css is put into practice is that it's a catcher for all of the styles until there's a better place for them. And sometimes you'll have a really long style.css file and then realize that it's better to put a chunk of it somewhere else and so you'll create a spin-off of that file and move them out. But until there's a better place for it or a common collection of styles that make sense together, they just end up in here. Let's go ahead and jump back to the directory and open up style.rtl. In here really should be styles that are only specific to right to left languages 
that don't belong in the other category. So we have some text alignment, some border changing that's changing because the text is going to be on the opposite side. We have some other items here, padding, changing, a lot of positioning stuff around smaller elements. So you'll see this kind of thing showing up inside of the right to left style sheets. All right, let's go ahead and jump back to the directory. So Bartik is a good theme to look at for a general example of how to split out your structure into reasonable chunks.